There is something that all really great PhD students have in common, and it's an overlap of three things. These three things are like the holy trinity of a great PhD student, and unfortunately, not all of them are in your control, but you can manipulate them a little bit. The holy trinity, oh, holy trinity. The first thing is drive or purpose. Now, a PhD student normally has a reason why they're doing a PhD, and if that reason is, well, I don't know what else to do. That normally makes them a good PhD student, but not a great one. A great PhD student has drive purpose and an actual reason to be doing that type of research. When you do your interview for your PhD position, um, that is often something that uh, you need to think about. Uh, why are you doing this? Why do you want to do this? Why now? Why you and why this university? A great PhD student understands all of those things and can articulate it relatively well. The second thing is, is that their area of PhD study tends to be very needed by society or is trendy or they are very good at marketing why it is important. So not only do they have a purpose and drive, but this area of research is very important to society. It satisfies one of the big things like energy, um, food security, understanding human emotion, like all of these things are really highly valued by humans. And so therefore they uh, get a lot of marketing time from their university. They get a lot of uh, tension on their research because it's an easy story to sell. If yours isn't a particularly easy story to sell, look for those marketing options for your research and approach your university to say, this is why it's important. Marketing PhDs and marketing your research goes a long way in making you stand out as a great PhD student because the university loves it because they get to talk about all awesome things and you get clear in your mind why you're doing what you're doing. The purpose and the importance for society, which can be manipulated by marketing, go hand in hand. And the third thing is that they can see themselves being the best in the world at this thing. And that's very important. When you're doing a PhD, you need to kind of see yourself as an expert in this particular field eventually. And so I'm in no doubt that there's a certain level of cockiness that needs to come along with becoming a great PhD student. And that's not necessarily to say that it has to be like outlandish or it has to be offensively cocky. It just has to be like, yeah, you know, we're working on this. We're going to be the best in this. We're the, we're the world record holders at this particular thing. We can do it. And being best at something means choosing your university wisely. Have they got the right skills, equipment, and expertise in a building all together? That will make you great. But also, um, are you willing to work hard to become the, the world leading expert in this particular thing. That is the holy trinity of a great PhD student. But do not worry because you can turn yourself from good to great with these other things. A great PhD student is willing to try new things. We all get so comfortable in our little bubble of familiarity, don't we? And so what happens is, is even in a PhD, you re reproduce what other people are doing, you try their experiments, you look at the things they're um, investigating, you repeat it for yourself and you go, this is great. And what unfortunately happens is you end up in your own little bubble, you create a little bubble of known things, of things that you know work. And it's hard then to jump out into a new thing, because when you jump out into a new thing, what is there? The potential for failure, which means potential for embarrassment. All of these things stop you from trying new things. Embracing failure as part of the process is something I talk about a lot on this channel, and a willingness to try new things, even if it is unknown, uncertain, could take you a long time, is really, really important in the world of a PhD. So, willingness to try new things and doing it without fear. No, not without fear. In spite of fear is very important. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. When you sign up, you'll get five emails with exclusive content that's only available on that newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. Go check it out and I'll get into your inbox soon. 
a great PhD student separates themselves from a good PhD student because they can see their work with brutal honesty. And that is so hard because as we do our research, our experiments, our investigations, we slowly put parts of ourselves into that research. And when it goes wrong, we don't like to admit to ourselves that we need to try something new, that we need to um, break from what we've been doing because what we've been doing hasn't been working, but we are so invested in that thing that quite often we continue along that line of inquiry knowing it will go nowhere. I'm a big fan of the 80-20 principle and doing these checks at the end of your first year and your second year. That is, what 20% of your research is giving you 80% of your results? Double down on that. That is the only real way to ensure that you can move on. And you move on in the right direction to get a PhD, yes. And being honest with yourself is the first thing. Don't take anything emotionally, don't allow emotions to seep into your decision making or allow them there for the first place and then think a little bit past that. There's a great book called Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow and I think that kind of model can really, really help PhD students be honest with themselves, be disciplined in how they think about their research and that can allow them then to progress much faster and further than if they're holding on to emotional opinions about their research. A great PhD student finds their balance for their work life. They know how much sleep they need, they know how much partying they can do, they know how, how much they need to be in the lab to get stuff done and everyone's balance is absolutely different. Do not try to replicate someone else's work-life balance because you think it's cool or because they're doing well. It's working well for them and maybe it'll only work for them in the short term. You have to be very honest with yourself about your balance, what you need to make sure you're performing at your best. Now, let's look at this guy. We'll call him Josh, because that's his name. I was amazed at how hard this guy worked, but also how hard this guy played. I couldn't believe it. He was a party animal, no doubt. Going to a conference with him was insane from the stories that I heard. But he would be in the lab every night until 2 a.m. Now that is ridiculous. No one, that wasn't the culture of the lab. But what you would do is work really hard during the week. He'd sort of like have lunch, go back in the lab, come out, go home for a little bit, come back to the lab at about 10 p.m. and then work until 2 a.m. I'm not saying this is healthy. I'm not saying this is right. But for some reason for him, it worked really well for the three years that he did his PhD. It was actually very impressive. If I tried to replicate that, I would be in a world of pain. I need loads of sleep. I need to be not drinking alcohol a lot on the weekends. But for him, it worked. So a great PhD student finds their own balance. He turned out to be a fantastic PhD student. He published like there was no tomorrow. All his research was done um, incredibly well. He published in high peer-reviewed uh, journals, but or high impact factor journals, I should say. But the other side of his life was a train wreck. <clears throat> he had just the biggest party going in PhD history. I am in no doubt about it. But do not try to replicate people like Josh. If you are someone like Josh, congratulations. You have just won the work play lottery. But for me and a lot of other people, that is not the right balance. So find your balance. Sometimes it's hard to find your balance because the culture in the lab is that you work a particular way, but great PhD supervisors will understand that other people have different rhythms to their life and do not try to be too kind to yourself necessarily in terms of, well, you know, I need to sleep in till midday. That's fine if you're putting in the work elsewhere, but we have a tendency to not be as disciplined as we need to be. So finding that balance where you have enough, enough discipline to continue to progress as a PhD student, but enough downtime that you are looking after yourself, your mental health and your physical health, that is an important balance to find and everyone's is different and a great PhD student knows exactly where that lies. 
So there are the most important things that separates a good PhD student from a great PhD student. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And go check out academiainsider.com where I have my ebook, The Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, where everything you need to know is there. And I had a fantastic review on this channel recently that said they bought the ebook and it was like I was sat next to them, guiding them through the whole process. And that felt so good because that's exactly what I wanted that ebook to do. So go check it out. And if it's right for you, um, it's found at academiainsider.com. And you'll also find my insider forum where we are a bunch of academics helping each other become better and helping each other out. All right then, until the next time, look after yourselves, find that work-life balance, and I shall see you in the next video.